Hi, I'm Joshua Finn from JNH Aerospace, and today we're going to build a torque meter. So, let's uh, get your tools together and get started. First of all, we will look at the goodies that are included in your kit. So you're going to have your parts sheet, and make sure that you have two of these little triangle pieces here, two that have an F on them. You have your dial gauge, which is the front, you have your back part, and then you'll have the, uh, the base plate. Also, you'll have a piece of 15,000th piano wire. You'll have a piece of aluminum tubing. Uh, aluminum tubing is about two inches long, and you'll have some spider wire for binding. So, to get started with construction, I've already popped these pieces out. I just got them staged. I was doing test fitting earlier. And so we'll drop all of that out, and we'll go ahead and we'll assemble the torque meter first. So what you're going to do is these pieces that are labeled for the front are going to plug in like so. The F goes in a vertical fashion, like that. And so we'll take some CA glue. Hopefully this bottle has... Hold on a second. That one is plugged. Let's unplug it. So what we're going to do, again, the F goes here, remember the dial goes on the front. Uh, chances are you'll have to kind of clean that dial because um, you pick up quite a bit of soot in the laser cutting process. So we'll go ahead and drop the other one in, again the F uh, going in vertical format. And now we're going to turn this guy around. The hole is going to go at the front. And so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and glue this entire assembly onto the front of our um, base plate. And it goes in like so. And a little short on glue on. You do want to do a decent job of gluing this because um, this part ordinarily would be a zero stress component, but if you break a motor, it's going to slap back against there and you don't want that popping loose. Now we'll go ahead and we'll assemble the rear portion. You've got a little slot here. Um, it doesn't really matter on orientation. What does matter is that this little piece, these triangles that go in here, uh, they will only go in one way. So, go ahead and key them up. We'll slip some glue on here. And we'll drop one in. Yeah, go in there. There we go. And we'll drop the other one in. And so basically we're just doing the same thing we did before. And there we go. All notched in together. This is a load bearing part because it's going to bear all of the tension from the rubber motor. So you do want to make sure these are decently secured in here. And there we go. So that's the frame assembled. Now for a little bit more complex of a part, first I'm going to show you what you're attempting to assemble. So what you're doing is you're making this part right here. So you have a piece of wire that goes all the way through this tube. Now that sounds complex, but we're going to make it easy. And the way that we're going to make it easy is we're going to slide this piece of wire all the way through the tube. Now there is a catch to that, and it's that you want to sand off this end of this tube to where it's nice and round. So I'll be right back. I'm going to get a piece of sandpaper and we'll sand it. 
Okay, so we have our, um, our sandpaper here, and so what we're going to do is we're going to round off one end of this guy. Now you can do both ends, um, it's up to you. And if you plan on ever winding a motor on here without an O-ring, and there are some scenarios where you would do that, um, you're going to want to use real fine sandpaper to just remove any burrs uh, at, at all from this guy. I'm actually going to sand the back too, just um, because it makes me feel better about my device to, to have it nice and sanded. Now what you're going to do, and this is very important, is we're about to make our hook. And so what I want to do is I want to measure with my finger about how far to put this wire in. And we don't want any excess. So we have this guy sticking through. We don't want it to, the wire to protrude from the end. We want it back in there. So holding that position, I'm going to take my pair of pliers. And I actually, I'm going to recommend using round nose pliers if you can get them. And all we're trying to do is we're trying to form a little hook here. Do not squeeze this aluminum tubing any more than you have to. The reason for that is anywhere you squeeze it, you're going to be crushing the tubing. Um, and that makes it a little harder to get at your rubber motor. And so what we're going to do is we're going to form this on around. And we do want the hook to be fairly tight and like that. And then once I, we've got it like that, we're going to grab and bend the hook back. And so you end up with this arrangement. Now you want to spin this in your hand, and when you spin it, you want to make sure that the apex here stays put as you spin it. See how that works like that? I can see a point here that stays put. That means it's balanced and in the center. Now if you notice, I pull on this wire. If I can pull as hard as I want to, the point I, uh, up to the point that I start really straightening, straightening out that um, piece of aluminum tubing, which is going to be probably, I don't know, 10-15 pounds of, of force, um, before there's going to be any, any tendency of that tube to straighten out. So this wire is not going to pull out. It is now in trap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and I'm going to clip off um, enough that I've got about an inch and a half protruding out the back with this sticking out the front a decent distance. Alternatively, I could just say I want to clip a couple inches off the back here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of pliers and I'm going to bend this, uh, this piece of wire about that angle. It doesn't have to be precise yet, is what you're going to do is you want to true it up to match into here like that. Actually, I'm doing that wrong. I'm doing that completely wrong. You want it to come in like so. And once, and I got it right, looks like on the first try, is it kind of matches in there. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this grip it back here and I'm going to bend it one more time like this. Now this angle we, we will tune in a minute. Take your spider wire here and first of all what we're going to do is we're going to smear some glue in that area where we said we ran out this guy. And what I want to do is I want to mount this piece of wire like that. See how that goes in there? Just like that. Now this is going to be a little bit finicky. Um, there are several ways you can do it. I'm going to show you. Um, probably should lay it down on the table while you're doing this, but I'm cheating and I'm going to go looking for something I can dip some um, CA accelerator out with. Um, actually, I am going to have to lay it down right here. So, more or less in there. Okay. 
Oh, come now. I don't think I got any. So there we go. It is starting to harden up a little. It doesn't have to harden up all the way because what we're wanting to do is to tie this guy in place with a piece of spider wire. And so all I'm going to do is drink over all of that contact area. Ah, I just slipped it right straight back out of there. CA glues to flesh much more easily than it does to wire parts. Now if you had a piece of heat shrink tube, you could actually heat shrink this in place. However, that usually is not as strong as this method. So, all right. So what I've done, as you can see, I've bound this piece of wire in place. Now I'm going to come in here. Run that off. Or, you know what, I don't know what I'm... Words are hard. Um, Put some glue in there. Come on. Use the dullest razor blade ever. And now, I come out here, and instead of measuring precisely, I'm just going to lay this in the middle like so. And I'm going to measure off to about the outer edge. And I'm going to clip this guy off. And I'm still going to clip off a little excess. And now, since I've got some excess, I'm going to take my um, pliers and bend this guy back around. So, like this. Let it all the way around and kind of squish it in. And this is just kind of giving me a fat end of my indicator needle. point we can drop this guy through and out the back like so. So it's going to fit like that. Now you can tape or whatever you want to do. Um, set the needle so it's sticking out from the face of this guy a little bit because you want to be able to get at your, your piece of rubber when you're, when you're doing this. Come back here with it in that position and grab flush with the back. Pull this out and now bend it straight up. And now you can see we have our notch up here, this little hole. Grab at the bottom of that, bend this down a little bit. Now, what you're going to need to do is take some wire cutters and cut that so there's that much sticking out. And now we can bring this guy on through the rest of the way. And voila. Now if you notice, my needle is not centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my hook and bend the needle back. Now I went too far. There we go. It looks like it. Yep, yeah, it is. It is centered. So now, when I apply torque on this guy, and a little tension, it's going to work its way on around, just like that. Now, what we'll need to do is I'll go get a C-clamp. We'll clamp this to the table, and we'll show you how to use it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this little guy and we're going to slide it over here. We're going to take a C-clamp like so. We're going to thread it up through that hole like that. Let me show you this. What we do is we bring the C-clamp up through. Now, open it up enough. So I've got 
napkins clamped on the table. Move you over here like that. And now I'm going to take an airplane. This rubber band. You want to set the airplane off to the side a little bit. Now I can come in here. Load this guy up. Start cranking him. And you can't see the torque setting, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you right here and we'll zoom you in. And that's going to be hard to see because the lighting is terrible in here at the moment. I'm at point one. This scale will read a little bit low. I'm targeting to go up to 0.4 inch ounces roughly, and it's probably in reality closer to 0.35. And now you'll notice I'm not using O-rings here, that's just because I'm in a little hurry to get this test off. But there, my needle is coming up on 0.4, right there. If I go in, torque drops off. If I pull back out, it rises a little bit. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is zoom back out a little bit. I'm going to put the very end here unwind a little bit. Load this on my plane. And Again, you should use O-rings, but off the motor it comes. And there you go. And just to show you that, you know, it all um, works out, we will turn you around. And I have this plane set up to circle left, so we'll launch it and off it goes into low earth orbit. And it gets stuck, like all planes do. So, let me, uh, I'll be right back here. Okay, so this has been the build video for the JNH Aerospace uh, Precision Torque Meter. Questions, comments, put them in the comments section below, and we'll see you later. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are JNH Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.